Welcome to the Dogs Podcast with your hosts, Blake Reniker, Justin Charles, and Josh All. What's up, Browns fans? Welcome back to another episode of the Dogs Podcast presented by Omaha Steaks. I'm Josh All, and I've got the Mac attack from the Great White North. Kenny Mac is joining me today. (laughs) Let's go, baby. I'm ready for some draft. Let's go. Well, there we go. Kenny just told you what we're doing today. We are mock drafting. We're going to do two mock drafts for you guys today, one on PFF and one on Pro Football Network, just because kind of the rankings between the two platforms are different. So we want to get different results and just see what we can do going through mock drafting for the Browns acting as the salary cap wizard, Andrew Barry, ourselves. Yes, sir. All right, cool. So we will be doing that. First, we want to talk a little bit about the Browns and their top 30 visits, guys that they've already brought in or plan to bring in. Just a little update on that. We're going to look at positions that the Browns have met with throughout this entire offseason. And then we're going to do a quick breakdown before we get into the drafts of the Browns roster, we're going to actually do a very early, probably a way too early, but maybe not projection of the Browns 53 man roster come September. Because when you look at the roster that way, when you try to project it out and see where we have holes that we could be filling in the draft, there are definitely positions that people are pounding the table for that. I don't think the Browns are going to be looking at in the draft due to the current depth chart and the projections for the 53. So we will dive into all that and Before we get into it all, though, make sure you guys are subscribing on YouTube, like the video, tap the notification bell, help us get to 10,000 subscribers on YouTube. We are getting closer and closer every day. And if you are listening on audio, we appreciate everybody following us there. And if you're on Apple Podcasts specifically, please scroll down to the bottom of the page and leave us a five-star written review. Those really help out the show and help us get in front of more Browns fans just like you guys. And the last thing, I just want to start really reminding everybody, the end of the month, April 26th, Friday night, 7 o'clock, the dogs are going to be live on YouTube doing our annual draft night breakdown. And this year, we've got some special guests coming into the studio, and Kenny Mack is one of those guys. Yeah, baby. Can't wait. I'm I'm excited to get down there. Uh, I've got my uh, lists compiled. i got some players that I want, and hopefully uh, Santa Barry comes and... Uh, drops those gifts under a tree <laughs> yeah well we'll be talking about some of those guys today for sure so we'll have kenny in studio Derek frisbee's coming up into the studio and we'll have special guest Devonte travis who did an episode with me back during the browns bye week well i guess it would have been the, the week 18 i call it the bye week before the playoff game and we were just talking about joe flacco and nick Foles. so good stuff we've seen him on the show before it'll be fun to have everybody in studio It's going to be a fun night. So that's 7 o'clock, maybe like I said before, 6.45, depends if we want to kick it off a little early. We'll do draft coverage for night two because that's where the Browns are going to be picking, rounds two and three, unless we trade back. We will see. And we'll recap the night before, talk about everything that happens in the first round, and just have a ton of fun. So make sure you hit the notification bell on YouTube so you don't miss any of our future lives. All right, Kenny, let's dive in to, first of all, I've got a list of the top 30 visits that the Browns, at least that I've been able to find so far, that are confirmed guys the Browns have actually met with or at least scheduled meetings with here in April before the draft. So, Do you want me to go quick into uh, what the top 30 means? Yeah, yeah, please do, yes. So the top 30, it's a, it's basically a term. It gives the expression to most people that these are preferred prospects. So the top 30 can be used for any level prospect. It doesn't matter. So you saw that we interviewed a rugby player And uh, that can be now the one there's one caveat to it, though, if they're within 50 miles, it doesn't count. Oh, I so you would have to tell me. Yeah. So that was a big thing that I wanted to get to. Now, the interviews at the combine, they're a little bit like a a speed dating feel. Um, So a player, when they comes to the uh, the top 30 visits, it is uh, on field. Sorry, on field workouts is what I'm trying to say are prohibited. Mm. Okay. So it's going to be drawing up plays. The biggest thing is, and and what you got to take away from this is they can go over medical records. So if there's a guy coming in, like I believe Trey Benson, they're Mm going to come in and see how sound that injury is. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, that is the biggest thing. Next is, is just diagramming, diagnosing plays and getting to know the player, but there is no on the field stuff. And remember the 50 mile rule. So Kent state, um, 
you know, even Baldwin Wallace, all the surrounding universities, they don't count. Now, is that is that 50 miles to the college where the prospect played or is it 50 miles to where the prospect like lives? You know what I mean? Ah, good point. And it didn't say. So just wait. Let's see. So those players that are uh, are or who live within 50 miles of the team facility. Okay, so it's live, not necessarily the college. So it's from Berea. Gotcha. Okay. Yep. And what? And like you said, it's not on field workouts. That's that's the combine. That's the pro days. And then it's really just diving into the tape because they're bringing guys into Berea basically just to sit down and say, "Let's get to know you. Would you even be a good fit for our team?" Right. Yeah. Yeah. And the other thing is, when they had Nick Chubb in all those years ago, let's see how good that knee is. And when can we draft you? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I know. And I, I saw a uh, an industry mock draft. It was like a three rounder and they sent linebacker, I believe Peyton Wilson, I think is the name. Correct. That's the linebacker yep. to the yeah. Browns and one I'd, I'd be surprised. And we'll, we'll talk about this a little bit later, but I would be surprised to see a linebacker at 54 and he's got two ACL injuries and coming off a shoulder injury and he's going to be 24. Yes. So I, as soon as yeah. I saw that, I thought, I don't think the Browns are taking Peyton Wilson, but no. So the one thing that I failed to mention is is sometimes these are smoke screens Mm. and they're so if you think that the Pittsburgh Steelers are going to draft this guy and you're super, they're super high on him. You might want to bring him in for a visit and see how you have to cope with him for four years or possibly 10 Mm. or maybe get a little Intel into his psyche to see, okay, if he is on the other side of the field from us, what can we you know, glean from a quick in-person meeting that maybe we can use to our advantage. Yeah, hundred percent. And then others is just filling out your free, your rookie free agents. Interesting. Okay. Well that I'm glad you, uh, you cut in there and gave us that information because I didn't even realize there was that 50 mile rule. And, um, yeah, I'm glad that you mentioned there's no on-field workouts. That's important. Yeah, no, I just came across that scouting out Gabe, Gabe Wallace. Yeah. Yeah. And if you guys want to hear about Gabe Wallace, head back to our episode we did a couple weeks ago, uh, talking yep. about six players the Browns have met with that we would like to see them draft if the opportunity should come about. So check that out. And let's look at some of these players real quick. And if Kenny, I, I don't know if you've got a list or if you're looking at players too, but if there's anybody I miss, just go ahead and jump in. But first, I just want to talk about the wide receivers they brought in because they did so okay. far either bring in or schedule three different wide receivers. The first one is wide receiver Malachi Corley from Western Kentucky. We talked about him a little bit on the show. We've also talked about wide receiver Troy Franklin. That's your guy. You did a big piece on him when we did our top six. And so this is the second meeting they've had with Troy Franklin from Oregon. And then they've also brought in wide receiver Lidatrick, I think might be the way you say it. Lidatrick Griffin from Texas A&M. His nickname is Tulu, though. Tulu Griffin. He's five foot 10, 180, 23 years old. So a little bit past that age point that Andrew Barry likes. I was kind of just, I had never heard of this kid before. So I just wanted to look a little bit more real quick. 50 receptions for 659 yards, four touchdowns in 2023. So not outlandish numbers, 2.25 yards per route run, a 60% contested catch rate. So not bad in that avenue. But when I was reading the scouting reports and things, his calling card is actually his abilities in the kick and punt return game. That's right. Which could be, I was instantly light bulb. I'm like, that might be why the Browns have zeroed in on this guy and brought him in for a visit during this process, because we've already talked about it with the new kickoff rules. Returns are going to be a great opportunity for teams to gain a competitive advantage if you have a skilled return man who can make plays. And uh, it's interesting, his name, nickname Tulu, came because his teammates when he was younger said he always got too loose when teams would kick the ball to him. <laughs> so he's too Lou Griffin. Don't be too loose. If you get drafted by the Browns, buddy, that's all I can say. <laughs> so those are the three wide receivers that I found so far that the Browns have either scheduled or had in-person visits with. Have, do you know of any others? Um, I, so Xavier Johnson is somebody that they're looking to uh, connect with from Ohio state. Oh, okay. All right, cool. Yeah, and I think it's just over Zoom. Like they're looking to get him in now. Xavier Johnson, from my understanding, is not in not in the top two hundred and fifty, but they want him. They're looking at him for some reason. I've heard from. I was listening to other scouting um, scouting shows, and they were talking about because they were talking about all the Xaviers in this class, and I did 
I heard his name before, but yeah, you're right. He's not in the top 250, so he's not popping up for me. But was there any other wide receivers or was that it? Uh, that's all I have. Okay, so there's a reason why I started there because wide receiver, when you look at the positional breakdowns, the Browns are really honing in on some some very specific positions. They're not they're not bringing in a bunch of players from different areas. It, it's they're focusing on wide receiver and they're focusing on this next group, which is offensive line. So they've already they've met with offensive tackle Kingsley Suma Suamatea from BYU, yep. and then they yep. either have or are meeting with Karen Amad. Imagedity or something like that from Yale. Yep. I mentioned him on the last show that I did. And that name, again, if we draft you, I will learn how to say it, I promise. And then we're meeting with a guy that I detailed on me and Kenny's episode, offensive guard from Miami, Javian Cohen, who I've kind of gotten myself locked into this guy. I, I really, he's attainable. He's like a mid round, you know, third, maybe sometimes fourth, whenever I'm mocking draft, you know, round pick for the Browns. I think he could be a really, really good starting offensive guard for the Browns after, you know, either Joel hangs it up or we decide to move on from Wyatt Teller. I believe there's some versatility with him too. Multiple yeah. guard mm -hmm. positions. I, I don't know if he played tackle or not, but I remember the, the key in reading on him was versatility. Yeah, definitely. So were there any other offensive linemen that you've seen as far as the top nope, 30? That no, I'll just I'll comment on the positions because I, I have the breakdown of the top 100 picks over the last four years, but I'll wait till you're done uh, the name calling there. Okay, so anyway, we've got the three wide or four wide receivers, including the one you mentioned, Xavier Johnson, and then it goes three offensive linemen, and then it goes, I'll just say real quick, two defensive tackles and a quarterback. So the defensive tackles, Michael Hall from Ohio State and McKinley yep. Jackson from Texas A&M. Uh, Barry Shuck did a whole lot. He he saw McKinley Jackson up close and personal at the Senior Bowl. Was really impressed by him. So if you want to hear yeah. more about McKinley Jackson, go back and check out those prospect episodes with Barry Shuck from Dogs by Nature. And the quarterback was Joe Milton from Tennessee, who I mentioned on the last episode. And thinking more in terms of him being potentially a tight end, not a quarterback at the NFL level. So I like that take, and uh, I just uh, put that out there today on social, uh, just talking with some people online. Um, so I can see that. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know if you saw the way, or well, you remember the way they used Harrison Bryant. So I literally think this guy is yeah. either going to be uh, tight end or, he, or some kind of H-back, uh, tush-push, uh, first, or sorry, fourth, fourth and short type play guy. So yep. it's just a matter of what they want to spend on a draft draft capital for him. Yeah, think think Tush Push. That's a great example. Think RPOs. Think uh, Taysom Hill for the yep. Saints coming in and doing different things. If a guy like Joe Milton can come in and be a versatile, like you said, an H-back, just kind of like an athlete. And you talked about the freak athletes. The guy's six foot five, 240-some pounds. He's a big body dude. He's an athletic yep. freak. And... You know, he's not core, he's not pro quarterback ready. So he's going to be a later pick if anyone wants to try him out at quarterback. But, it, you know, had to have that type of player on the field who can p throw a pass if you need him to. And, and you know he can throw a pass. Now, he's not going to come in here and run your offense. But to run a no. trick play and make a good throw that's schemed open? Absolutely. I think that would be a, that'd be really cool. If you take a look at his chart, he, he is like over 80% uh, percentile and everything. And he is like Dante Culpepper like, I'm not saying he is Dante Culpepper. I'm saying that he is like him, just not to the ability that Dante could process information and yes. move an offense. Yep. That's one of the big knocks on him is his NFL, you know, level processing, decision-making accuracy, that kind of stuff. That's going to need a lot of work if he's going to play quarterback at the next level, but he's got a rocket arm. He's got all the tools to you know, if yep. you wanted to just bi build a quarterback in a laboratory and just spit out a physical specimen, it would be Joe Milton. So, pretty cool. Yep. So that's the one other guy that I saw the Browns were meeting with. And outside of now, those, did you see the two today? No, were there two more? Okay, Michael Michael Pratt from Tulane, and then they have uh, okay, Adifi Juan Osho Fisho. Uh, he is a linebacker, and uh, I did not put down where he's from. Interesting. But I was doing my. Uh, I've mocked him. A I was doing times. my research on him today. 
Because he's Go ahead. A, he, I just said I've mocked him a couple of times because he actually he was going to be one of my targets if if he was available in one of our drafts today because he's available a little bit later and he's got if I remember right he's got a pretty impressive uh, Raz score. Yeah, yeah, he does, and I kind of compared him to Wilson from. Um, the Bengals, because everybody kind of said, oh, why didn't we pick that guy? Well, we got our chance now if this guy's available. Interesting. And who was the lo- the other guy was a quarterback, right? Yeah, the quarterback was uh, Michael Pratt from Tulane. Okay. Yep, I recognize that name as well. So there's kind of your update on the top 30 prospect list right now. We'll try to keep you guys updated as the weeks go on leading up to the end of April here. And just make sure you guys at least are familiar with the names that the Browns have met with. Now, just because they meet with them doesn't mean obviously they draft them. There's been years where we really don't draft anybody we've had in for a top 30 visit because other teams pick them. There's years where we draft two or three of the guys that, I mean, last year it was Ika, DTR, Dewan Jones. We had all three of those guys yep. in for yep. top 30s, but then there's Cedric Tillman sitting there in the third round. I don't believe we had him in for a top 30, but he was on the board. He's a great value. So the Browns took him. That's just kind of how the draft works. But these are names definitely to be familiar with. This episode is brought to you by Omaha Steaks. Browns fans, nothing says summer is on its way like the taste of a juicy, tender burger that is grilled to perfection. And nobody does burger perfection like Omaha Steaks. And right now, when you guys go to omahasteaks.com slash dogs, you can order the limited time burger perfection flight. This is one of my favorite deals from last year that they did, and I'm so glad they're doing it again. You guys get 24 mouthwatering steak burgers, not just regular burgers, Freaking steak burgers, the pure ground filet mignon burgers, the New York strip burgers, the ribeye burgers, the brisket burgers, the sirloin burgers, and the all new porterhouse burgers. And you get all of that for just $89.99 when you use our code DAWGS DOGS when you check out. Each six ounce burger is filled with flavor from the mild and tender filet mignon to the rich and buttery ribeye. The quality and deliciousness of these burgers can only come from Omaha Steaks and they are guaranteed to satisfy. And guys, at $3.75 a patty, you really can't beat that with the price of food right now. And the price of meat in the grocery stores is absolutely ridiculous. You cannot beat this deal. 90 bucks, 89.99 for 24 of these phenomenal, delicious, awesome steak burgers. And you get all of that when you use code DOGS at checkout. Go to omahasteaks.com, order the Burger Perfection Flight today, and do not forget to use that promo code DOGS, D-A-W-G-S, when you check out to get everything. The 24 delicious burgers. Hurry, because these supplies are limited. Take advantage of this opportunity now before supplies run out. OmahaSteaks.com slash dogs, promo code dogs. All right, so now real quick before we dive into the mock drafts, because I know that's what everybody's just waiting to hear, let's look at the Browns' projected 53-man roster, the positional groupings. And I know, Kenny, you've got that breakdown that you mentioned earlier, right? Yeah, so the top 100 picks, so the most important picks that you want to draft, the highest value you can get for uh, talent, um, is br- broken down here. So basically the main thing that the Browns have drafted over the last little bit uh, is um, wide receiver at 25%. Okay, so you can think about Schwartz, you can think about uh, Sed Till, uh, you can think about uh, Bell. And then after that it would be um, uh, offensive tackle, or I guess you can put offensive line in that, but really we haven't drafted any offensive guards in the top um, uh, 100. Then defensive line is also 16%. Linebacker has been 16%. It's actually 16.7 if you want to be specific. And that's basically what it rounds out to other than safety was at uh, 8%. So if you're thinking about running back, what's that? Where's corner? Corner was, uh, oh, corner was 8% as well. Eight. Oh, interesting. And, uh, yeah. Uh, but if you're thinking about running back, if you're thinking about tight end, offensive guard, um, they were all not on there, right? Kicker, all that kind of stuff. But uh, the only the only other one that I missed was defensive end. It was also 8%. There's a lot of them at 8% and 16%. So it's been pretty uh, on par with where Andrew Barry values the money for the position. That's interesting. Okay. Well, that's good to know. That That's good information to keep in mind as we go through these mock drafts and good reasoning for why we're making certain picks when we make them or passing on certain guys or positions when we do. Looking at the Browns 53-man roster just real quick, this is just a quick projection, but real quick, you know you've got 
We're going to carry three quarterbacks. Andrew Barry's already said that that's going to happen. So there's your Watson, Winston, Huntley, most likely. And then yep. just to go real quick and easy, three special teams guys. You know, obviously, you got Dustin Hopkins, uh, Bajorquez, and Charlie Hewlett. So there's yep. six guys off. And then at running back, obviously, we're keeping Chubb, but he's probably going to start on Pup. So then you're looking at Ford, Foreman. And then here's the first spot where I have a potential rookie. It's either going to be Pierre Strong or a rookie in that, in that running back spot. And then you go to wide receiver. Last year, we kept six, so I'm kind of sticking with that trend. You know you've got Cooper, Judy, Moore, and Tillman locked in as your top four, but then David Bell slash maybe a rookie if David Bell ends up getting cut, and then uh, James Prochet slash maybe a rookie. So there potentially could be two wide receiver spots open. You never know. Uh, I would imagine they keep either, you know, one of Bell or Prochet, but, you know, we'll see what happens. Tight end. Man, obviously we've got Njoku and Aikens, but we need help there. Absolutely. But like you said, not a high, not a highly valued position to draft. Yeah, so, ab- but if you take a look at the depth that we were talking earlier before we started this, you look at it and say, okay, where are we going to be really hurt if we lose our starter? Tight end is a big red flag. Uh, I'll let you get through it, but linebackers, a big red flag and offensive guards, a big red flag for me. Aside from running back, which we already discussed. You're absolutely 100% right. Uh, I pegged in here 10 offensive linemen. That would be Jed Wills, Jack Conklin, Dewan Jones. There are your tackles and Joel Batonio, uh, Wyatt Teller, guards, Ethan Posick. And then obviously you've got Luke Whipler, who can play guard and center. Hakeem Adeniji, who we just signed. That's another tackle. And then I've got question marks here. James Hudson slash rookie. I don't think Hudson's any lock to make this roster. And then Michael no. Michael Dunn is the only other guard slash rookie. So like you said, yeah, depth is depth is not making me feel so warm and fuzzy on the offensive line right no. now. No. And then I don't know what there's out for free agency, but no one no free agents are going to get signed until we have this draft. Right. And so if we can bolster those, ultimately that'll dictate what happens for the rest of the offseason. Yep. So now switching over to defense, and this is where it gets interesting, and I'll just go ahead and say what my thoughts are on this position. I saw, I, I've seen a lot of people talking about defensive tackle, and the Browns have brought in and met with quite a few defensive tackles. But like you said, it's also one of those high positions of value. But I saw Jack Duffin on Twitter make a really great point. He said, who's getting cut? If you draft a defensive tackle in this draft, especially one in the second or third round, who, who are you getting rid of? Because right now we have... Dalvin Tomlinson, Shelby Harris, Mo Hurst, Quentin Jefferson, and Siaki Ika. Last year, the Browns rolled into September with four defensive tackles, I believe, on the active roster. And this year, there's five guys right there I just named. So who's yeah, who's gone? I, I don't think anybody, and I don't think you put anything into that. I mean, I can see from the outside looking in, if you 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 took a look and it's like at the beginning of the year, you're like, oh my God, they don't have any defensive tackles. Well, we got guys back on one-year deals. Mm-hmm. And now we still have Sayaki Ika. So that, that extends it to five. So you got all these one-year deals. So maybe you want somebody on four and unfortunately someone's going to get cut. That's the only way I see it. Yeah, same here. So that's why when we go through these mock drafts, we'll see who's available at what spots, but... I'm not going high priority defensive tackle because we're pretty set. I 100% agree. And then defensive end, we've got Miles Garrett, Zadarius Smith, Obo Okwankro, Alex Wright, and Isaiah McGuire. So we've got five defensive ends too. So right there, that's 10 defensive linemen. The One of the ways I see it happening is if they find a guy in the draft, and I think a Michael Hall from Ohio State could actually fit this calling card of can play both positions. You can put him out on yeah. the edge if you need to, and he can play inside if you need to. And I think I think the Browns are going to be looking for ver- versatile guys. That's what Joe Milton would be if they were looking at him. He could Maybe he could play some tight end. Maybe he could play some fullback. Maybe he could play some quarterback here and there. Wildcat, yep. you know, don't pigeonhole these guys into one spot. And then here we go into yep. linebacker. Like you said, this is I've got a few of these highlighted, and linebacker's one of them. We got JOK. We signed uh, Jordan Hicks and Devin Bush, which is awesome. But after that, what do we've got? We've got Tony Fields slash rookie. We've got Muhammad Diabati slash rookie. We're going to need to address the linebacker position. Yep. But I don't think they're going to address it high. No, there's value to be had for both running back and uh, linebacker at the end of this draft. Because all the other uh, positions of value are going to push them down. And you could get something really good after on the day three. 
Yeah, I agree. I would be floored if the Browns drafted a safety. I don't think we need to worry about that. We've got Delpit, Thornhill, Bell, Hickman, and McLeod. That's five safeties. And I'm pretty sure the last time I checked, we have all five of those safeties. And collectively, they're underneath they're under ten million dollars toward the cap this year as a unit, which yeah. is insane. Yeah. Andrew, I, I don't know I how don't he does this that. stuff. Yeah, I don't see that. It's funny when I do my mock drafts, every time the first person, the highest value person that comes up in round two Bullard. is uh, Javon Bullard. Yep. Yeah, it's the same the same guy. And I'm just like, well, what if I just draft him this time? See, that doesn't get me a good grade <laughs> anyway. So I'm just, just let him go. Yeah. Let him go, guys. He's not getting drafted. That's right. And then cornerback, of course, we've got Ward, Emerson, Newsom, Cam Mitchell from last year. We just signed Tony Brown and Justin Hardy. And another thing that I've mentioned before on the show, we talked about Browns haven't met with any cornerbacks. So no. for me, that's I, I'm not thinking they're drafting a corner this year. No, it's going to be, uh, it's going to break a streak. Yeah. I think a receiver and corner they drafted every year in Barry's tenure, I believe. I believe so. And I think that just goes to say that Greg Newsom is here for at least this season. Yeah. We'll see what happens with this fifth year option. And even if they pick it up, doesn't mean they can't trade him. I mean, Judy had his fifth year picked up and now he's on our team. So you know, it just yep, gives the Browns absolutely. flexibility with that position. Then they could always focus their efforts on cornerback next year and yep. go about it that way. So that's that's your roster. That's your Cleveland Browns roster. And going through the names makes me really happy because I love this roster. I think, I mean, I've waited decades to be able to talk about a team like this in consecutive years, you know, and, and I just think that we've got a really good thing going. And it's nice that Andrew Barry and the Browns get to go through the draft and we, we say they get to go BPA for the most part, but it's it's really BPA at positions they deem valuable. You know, kind of like you That's were right. bringing up with with those positional breakdowns. Yeah. I mean, the only other thing I've said about Barry is that he's looking for health. Like, I mean, based on last year, yeah. uh, what was it, the strategy here? Health, uh, top end, not always top end talent, but health and something across draft ranges, I thought more along the lines is what we were saying before. They can play multiple positions. Right. Yeah. I think that's that's key. And there's a couple guys, you know, offensive linemen too, that could hold down a, a guard or tackle spot. So we'll yeah, see absolutely. what the Browns decide to do, but we we have to wait till April 26th to see what the Browns are going to start doing in the draft. But now we yeah. get to see what Josh and Kenny, the GMs of the Browns, get to do as we kick over to our first mock draft. Which one do you want to start with, Kenny? PFF or Pro Football Network? Let's go Pro, F Pro Football Network because I don't use it, so I want a surprise. Okay, we will do Let's Pro do Football it. Network for our first mock draft. Before we move on, Ohio, Bet365 is offering new users $150 in bonus bets this month. To receive your bonus bets, all you have to do is sign up for Bet365 using our link, make a first deposit of $10, and place a $5 wager on any game. Once that first $5 bet settles, you will receive $150 in bonus bets, even if you lose the bet. To be eligible for this sign-up bonus, you must sign up through our link down in the description. So if you haven't yet signed up for Bet365, click our link in the description and place that first bet. This offer is only available for new customers who are 21 and older and physically present in Ohio. Please gamble responsibly. If you or a loved one has a gambling problem, call 1-800-GAMBLER. Check the episode description for the full terms to see if you can qualify. Okay, so here we are kicking things off with the Pro Football Network Mock Draft Simulator. We are going to go seven rounds. We're going to put it on fast for the Cleveland Browns, and we can always scroll back up and look at other picks that other teams made if we're curious and see how things shake out. So here we go. I'm going to enter the draft, and let's see what happens. So oh boy, let's I already see what saw we got that here. old Caleb Williams did go first to the Chicago Bears. Scrolling into the second round now, and the Browns are... We're not going to do any. Uh, we're not going to do any trades. So I'm just going to click out of no. the trade offer box, and it looks like real quick, just from what's on the screen, Malachi Corley, the receiver we talked about, went two picks ahead of us to the Los Angeles Rams, and yeah. we're looking on the board. Very interesting names. Okay, so obviously we've got Trey Benson, the running back from Florida State. We've got Edger and Cooper, the linebacker from Texas A&M. Cooper Beebe, the offensive guard from Kansas State. I don't know about you, but I got my eye on him at the moment. Patrick Paul, the offensive tackle from Houston. I know Barry Shuck saw him at the Senior Bowl. Was very impressed with Patrick Paul. I believe the Browns met with him at the Combine, or they met with him at the Senior Bowl. I can't remember. Michael Hall is here. 
I know you yep. uh you you like Ben Sennett, right? The tight end from Kansas State. Yeah, I do. I, I his measurables are amazing. Um, the guy's super fast. He's got a great um, size to uh, speed ratio, and uh, I think he's like every other tight end. Mm. He's got a he's got to learn to block. Six foot three, two fifty. Got a nine seven two Raz. Uh, and again, if you're not familiar, Raz score is out of ten. So obviously, anything in the nines is pretty good. As close to ten as you can get. So nine seven two is pretty good for him. And then just scrolling yeah, down. I, I'm, I know a lot of people are big on Xavier Leggett, and I'll, you can give me your opinion here in a second. I'm not big at all on Xavier Leggett personally because the dude played five years in college, and in his first four years, never once did he eclipse 200 yards receiving in any season in his first four years, and he didn't break out in college until he was 23 years old playing against you know 18, 19-year-olds. So for me, that's a pretty big red flag, but how do you feel about Xavier Leggett? I'm not certain about him. I mean, I like the comparison if you're going to just look at the metrics to Mike Evans because we all wanted Mike Evans on our team. I think my way is I would go if they're available would be Johnny Wilson or Keon Mm. Coleman. And they're both over 200 pounds. They're both over 6'4", 6'3 and a bit, I should say. And um, I I like where those guys are at. They run a 4'5", a 4'6". I don't know what uh, Xavier... um, uh, Leggett does uh, as far as the measurables are concerned, but like he's, he's only six one too. I mean, it, if I'm going to draft a guy that's 221 pounds, maybe a little bit leaner, a little bit faster, his RAS score is amazing. So yeah. maybe you do sit him on the bench and he's going to learn. Cause I do like the freaks. I don't know if he was on the freak list. Um, uh, but uh, I, I would probably pass for another receiver. I think tight end's a bigger uh, deal, so I'd, I'd like to go to tight end. And that score um, uh, for the um, uh, the tight end that we who were we talking about there? Ben Sennett. Ben, yeah. So with him, he's six three, two hundred fifty pounds. Now, if you take a look at, I, I actually took Gronks. He's six six, two hundred sixty four pounds. He could run the forty yard dash in a four six eight. And um, I don't have what his RAS score was, but if he can block similarly to um, yeah. uh, uh, um, him, then basically uh, that would be great if it could be somewhat close to, to Gronk. So, but he's he's go ahead. No, I was, go ahead. Finish up. Yeah, I mean, I have Nj- Njoku. I was also big on Tavi and Sanders as well, and those guys are like l- literally almost identical within like inches and a pound of each other as far as like what they do, even their 40 yard dashes. Um, the Joku was four, six, four. Um, uh, Sanders was four, six, nine. These guys are just unbelievably close. He's not available. So I think I would go for Ben summit, uh, sign up. Okay. And so, I would, I would, I would nail that down and I'd be developing this guy. I'd have Tommy Reese proving that he's the guy uh, that developed all those uh, Notre Dame tight ends, and he's going to take this kid and develop him into the NFL. So when I'm looking at tight end, I, I there's some names later on in the draft too. We got Theo Johnson from Penn State, Jared Wiley from TCU, Jaheim Bell from Florida State, and Eric All from Iowa, which you know Iowa produces some pretty damn good tight ends into the NFL. And I mean, I'm a little partial to, partial to Eric All because I like his last name. But uh, he spells it wrong, which sucks. <laughs> but so th- I'm looking at tight end and I'm seeing, okay, may th- we might be able to find a developmental talent later on, but I think Senate could come in and contribute a little more early on. The only, So if you're looking at Senate here, I would say my, my pick, if it were up to me, would be Patrick Paul, the offensive tackle from Houston. But there's also tackles that, be, that can be had in the future rounds. So... Do you want to go with uh, the tight end Senate and see how this thing goes out? I'll go. Um, yeah, I'll go. Uh, I like Theo Johnson too. And you know what? He's a Canuck like me. So, I, I mean, I might hold out for that just based on the, uh, the um, uh, uh, Maple no. Leaf ties there. <laughs> but uh, let's, uh, let's go, let's go for, um, I'll, I'll take the tight end this time around, and you, we'll, we'll, we'll lean up more of you on the second uh, mock draft here. Okay, sounds good. So we're taking Ben Sennett, the tight end, out of... And look at that. I already can't remember where he was. Kansas State. I, I'm thinking, okay, I know it's purple. <laughs> so, all right, we've got our tight end. And now we're looking back <clears throat> to see who's available. So at running back, Jonathan Brooks from Texas. 
is on the board. Chris Jenkins, the defensive tackle from Michigan. You've got Will Shipley, another running back from Clemson. Here's Javon Bullard in this mock draft, uh, Kenny. Safety from Georgia yeah, he's, here in the third round. He's a lot He's a lot lower. I know uh, a lot of people... Oh, did we just see McKinley Jackson? McKinley Jackson is here. The, yep. Defensive tackle. Boy, I'm looking at the defensive tackles right now between... So Junior, uh, or Junior Colson is the... Uh, he's a linebacker, and we really need a linebacker. That guy's super rangy. Um, I, I would almost want to go linebacker and invest invest something in a, a rookie deal for the next four years so we don't have to be doing these one-year contracts um, for the rest of the crew other than uh, JOK. Yeah. So the only other thing is here is Karen uh, Amegedi, who the Browns have had in for a visit, and... Pulling up his information, 6'5", 323, um, 99% or 99th percentile length. I I really like, and I'm, I can't even say his name, but I like him, Amegedi. <laughs> and uh, I think the Browns need to get, they need to get offensive line taken care of in this draft. And I'm thinking they're probably going to do it early. But we can go. Um, we can go, Junior Colson. I am going to agree with you on that. I didn't think that. I, I literally thought with our next pick that he would not be available this late, uh, based on his metrics. I would love to have him part of our team. I would love to have him on a uh, third round rookie contract. Uh, most people. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna dote on uh, Jed Wills, but I mean that might spell him being gone, and it might be just a cap relief for us as well. Yeah, I mean, there's some there's some linebackers later on too. I mean, Curtis Jacobs from Penn State, Tommy Eichenberg from Ohio State, Maurice LeFou from Notre Dame. Uh, this uh, the linebacker from Washington. Didn't you say the Browns were meeting with him, Adefon Ulufoshio? Yep, Ulufoshio. Yep. So there, he could be available a little bit later. I've been looking at this Omar Spates from LSU as well. Looks like he could potentially be a decent uh, rookie contract type of linebacker too. So you want to go ahead? We'll do. Um, <laughs> Karen Emegedi, offensive tackle from yeah. Yale. And if the Browns actually do draft you, like I said a couple times now, I will learn how to say your name. So now we're rolling through the next few picks here. The Browns are back up at 156. And there's some names I've already seen fly off the board that I'm kind of disappointed we didn't have an opportunity to get, but we'll see who's available now. So there's the yeah, tight end. Funny, a, a, Ravens, a Ravens trade, that'll never happen. Yeah, right. I know. Every time those come up, I automatically just X out of them. But let's see. Now we're looking at Jaheim Bell, the tight end from Florida State. Um, let's see. Isaiah Davis, I don't really know much about this running back from South Dakota State. Six foot 218. He's got a 904 RAS score. Um, let's see who else is in here. There's that. There's Curtis Jacobs. There's JV and Cohen, the offensive guard from Miami. Yeah, I, I, I kind of like him. We've already him. taken our tight end, and there's Tommy Eichenberg. Oh, Tommy Eichenberg, nice. Now he's at 175. Our next pick after this is 206. So there's a chance maybe he falls. You never know. So let's see. What are you thinking here? So. I mean, I, I'm I'm worried about our, our guard situation. I'd like to yeah. get somebody in there that's versatile. I, I like what you said, and I liked in the last episode what you said about Cohen. I think he'd be a great pick for us um, as far as like grading out, maybe not the best, but I think he can be developed by our, our new offensive line coach, and uh, he looks ideal for uh, the zone scheme that we, we run. Absolutely. So we'll go ahead and draft Javian Cohen, the offensive guard from Miami. And we'll let the draft roll on to pick 206 here for the Cleveland Browns. And one thing we haven't done, I just saw Eichenberg go off, so we'll see who's available as far as linebacker stuff go. But we haven't taken a wide receiver yet. We have not taken a running back. We have not taken a linebacker. So we've got this pick, and we've got 243 after this. So on the board, George Holani from Boise State, the running back. I'm just looking at positions we need. Uh, Joe and Briggs, defensive tackle from Cincinnati. Um, there, there's might, Ulo Foshio, the linebacker from yeah, Washington. We're uh, doing we're Ooh. doing a top uh, thirty pick with uh, him, so I, I'd like to take him. He's rangy. I think he was like the force behind that Washington defense. I think he's going to be a leader. I I like my guy is just a little bit bigger, but maybe it's because I'm an old school NFL guy. Uh, linebackers don't 
get to over 240 too much anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I like where he's at. I think he'd be a great addition uh, to um, Jim Schwartz. Jim Schwartz is not um, partial to just to sticking with veterans. He will start rookies uh, if they show promise. And I think he'd be a great match for us. That's perfect. Yeah, six foot two thirty six, RAS score of nine six seven. So graded out very well in that regard. So we will go ahead and take. Do you want to say his name? No, we'll just say <laughs> call him Ed. We'll just call him Ed. Ed Ulafoshio, the linebacker from Washington. And again, if you get drafted, we are going to practice and practice until we get your name right. Blake probably won't, but no, at least I'm I'll saying try. Ed from Washington. Ed from Washington. <laughs> now we're on the board with our last pick and. You know, we have not done running back. We have not done wide receiver. Are there any other positions you're interested in here? I'm just looking. Wide receivers, there's uh, Tulu Griffin is on the board. And then at running back, the one guy here, there's Aiden Robbins. I know you like him. And I've been looking into this Rasheen Ali uh, running back from Marshall. And the dude... The dude has had a 2,000 plus yard seasons in college. I think his second year was shortened by injury potentially, but a touchdown machine at uh, at Marshall. What's his, uh, what's his, um, I, I've looked into he him too. Have, I can't remember what he is. He's 5'11, 206. Rouse score is not available on this simulator. Mm, that's a tough call so because i want to go for like the genetic freak here and i know robbins is like yeah. 240 so you're basically you're basically drafting peyton peyton hillis here you know what i mean mm-hmm. he's uh it, the height and the weight's not there but he is six plus he's 240 he can run a four or five um let's say six um i know when i was down at unlv he was not playing he had it already transferred and there's nothing that like but good things I heard about the guy uh, when I was sitting in with the UNLV Rebel fans. Well, let's do it. Let's take Aiden Robbins. Sound good? Yep. Sounds good to me. Okay. So that was the final pick for the Browns in this draft. So we walk out of here with, man, I got to go back through and say these names again. Ben Sennett, tight end from Kansas State. Karen Emejidi, offensive tackle from Yale. Javian Cohen, offensive guard from Miami. So the Browns get two offensive linemen, which I think is very possible walking out of this draft. Ed Afuan, or Ed from Washington, Ula Foshio, linebacker, and then we wrapped it up with Aiden Robbins, the running back out of BYU. I don't hate it, Kenny. Yep. I don't hate it. No, I mean, uh, ultimately, we need some depth pizzas on offense. I don't think we need much depth on defense, and it's like we said earlier. If you're going to draft someone, it's because somebody f- fell, like Dewan Jones fell last year, and you got to take him. Absolutely, and... I will go ahead and preface some, you know, more content coming out before the draft here, but I really do think the most likely scenario at the moment, Browns trade back out of that second round spot, maybe either later in the second or into the early third, because I'm look, I've been looking at all the mock drafts that I do and all the results I get. And like this draft, we walked out, we didn't get a wide receiver. And I think it's very unlikely that the Browns go this entire draft and don't get a wide receiver. I think it's more likely They trade back at some point, pick up an extra pick or two to kind of fill out more of those positions that they need players at. So I just wanted to make sure I I mentioned that. Yeah, I agree with that totally. All right, so you ready to kick over to PFF? Yeah, let's do it. This episode is sponsored by Aura. Browns fans, your online data and identity are way too precious to be left just hanging out there in the open for these data-stealing thugs to come after it, take it, and sell it to whoever they want. Scammers and spammers are just capitalizing on all of your data being sold, and I'm telling you right now, you don't even realize it because I didn't realize it. Head over to Aura, A-U-R-A dot com slash dogs, D-A-W-G-S. Get a 14-day free trial. This is what I did. Create your account, and then you can run your data check, a free data check, and it will tell you how many data brokers are selling your information on the dark web and in different areas of the internet. And then Aura starts working immediately to remove your information from those places. I kept thinking I was good online. I was fine. I wasn't doing anything 
crazy with my information. I was being cautious while I was shopping online, all those things. And still, when I ran my check, I had 14 data brokers identified selling my information and or immediately started taking my name and all my information, my address, my email, my phone number, everything out of those places. I am so sick and tired of getting the spam emails, getting the spam text messages, the calls, and it's time to put all that crap to an end. So check out Aura, 14 day free trial, run your checks, see what all the features they have to offer, like their VPN, their parental controls, everything that they have to protect your online identity. Aura.com slash dogs. Take back control of your identity today. All right, so we'll head over into the PFF mock draft simulator. We will be on the clock with the Browns. We're going to run seven rounds, ramp this thing up to turbo. Are these settings all good for you here? I think these are just the I put, I put public versus like PFF in the middle. Like I, I, I like the PFF board, so okay. I, I don't like what public has to say. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. All right. So is that about the only adjustment you want to make? Yeah, that's good for me. All right, so we will enter the draft. We will see what happens here on our way to pick 54. And here we are. We are on the board, and we've got, looks like a couple edge rushers are sitting there on the board for us. This Rook o Ohora Horo, defensive interior lineman from Clemson. Keon Coleman is on the board, wide receiver from Florida State. Jonathan Brooks, running back from Texas. Uh, Amegedi is still on the board here, tackle from Yale. And just kind of scrolling down to see. Here's a guy that I have been interested in is Christian Haynes. And I okay, thought, I've seen him yet. You no, know, I didn't have him on my list of players the Browns met with, but I thought I read an article where they did meet with him. Or maybe no, not, that, not anything that I've seen, but okay. I, you, you might have seen something that I haven't. Okay, maybe I'll, I'll try to figure out what I was thinking. But yep, so those so are kind for, of the. Go ahead. For me, ultimately, what I want to do here is like, um, I like. Uh, the kid from Clemson. And the reason is because I think he can play across the uh, defensive line based on his experience at tackle and his um, uh, size for defensive end. I, I, that's basically, um, if we're going to look at looking at guys, he's 6'4", he's 295, and he seems a little slight for defensive tackle. But if you're going to put him on these like Ferrari packages or whatever these pass rush packages are called, I think he's going to have, I think he, that's where he's going to be. Um, you look at everything I read about the guy and he even says here, high floor player, you know what I mean? And um, that's what you want. And I think that's the kind of guy, uh, rotational player. Uh, you can, you can see that he's going to be a guy that's going to be a pass rusher, kind of like, um, uh, Oroko now. And, um, uh, I think that you're going to have him for four years at 22 years old. Isn't a bad deal, but I also like Keon Coleman as a receiver. We haven't picked one yet. Uh, the guy's 215 pounds. He's six, four. He's very similar, uh, but not as heavy as, um, uh, Mike Evans. And, uh, he just didn't have the output that Mike Evans had in his senior year. Um, but that's somebody that we could develop. He's only 20. He's not even 21 yet. I know. And he's young. Uh, that is uh, very uh, tempting for me. Um, I can't remember. If he, I don't think he's the one that's on the freak list. But 6'4", 215 pounds, at all, not even 21 years old. He's going to put some uh, muscle on that frame. Uh, says he's an alpha type receiver. He pulls up. I think his, his uh, claim to fame is um, the contested catches. Contested catch rate is 33.3%, so a little on the lower side, actually. That's Okay, so I'm, com I'm confusing him with his teammate then. Yeah, I mean, Keon Coleman, during the, during the season, the college football season, I think a lot of analysts at him projected as a first-round type of talent. And then, obviously, you know, things always change as the season goes on. So other guys came up, he went down, blah, blah, blah. But, I, you know, at, at 20, not even 21 years old, like you said, 6'4", 215, Top tier athlete for his position. He's got burst, top speed, uh, leaping abilities. They say they're all all pro caliber. So he's not a great route runner. He's not a great separator. He doesn't have an extensive route tree or anything like that. But when you have all of those intangibles, and like you said, draft the freaks. Draft the freaks and let them develop into what you need them to be because we we don't need him, uh, uh, barring injury, to go out and be anything huge for the Browns. We've got Cooper, Judy, Moore, and Tillman. I think we're going to be okay to let this guy kind of progress at his own pace, learn and develop without being thrust into like 
hey, we drafted you in the second round. You have to be our number one receiver immediately. Yeah, I, I agree with that too. He's not going to be pressed for playing time unless some crazy happens on the injury front. Well, I'm okay to go Coleman here since we did not take a wide receiver in our other draft. And I I know what you're saying about Rook from Clemson. The only problem is defensive tackle. Who's getting pushed off the roster at this point? And that's just where I could see them drafting a guy maybe later on if there's a value. But at this point, you know he's a lock to make the roster, which means somebody's got to go. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I just want to talk about the guy. I think he's he's a uh, be a great uh, addition for us, but I just don't see it on the team right now. Okay, so we'll go ahead and draft Keon Coleman. The only other guy I wanted to mention a little bit further down the list here on PFF, but a guy that I have started to warm warm to the more I dig into is uh, Tez Walker, wide receiver from North Carolina. We'll, we'll go ahead and take Coleman here, mm. but. Walker, 6'2", 200. He's 22, you know, almost 23 years old, so he's a little bit older. But I've been hearing a lot of really nice things about him as well. But we will go ahead and we will take Keon Coleman and hope he develops into a good outside alpha dog receiver for the Cleveland Browns. So then we are rolling down to pick 85, and here we are on the board. Trey Benson's still on the board which I don't think okay. this is going to happen in the real NFL draft. I don't think he'll be available in the third. I think he's going to go late second, but who knows? There's, um, well, Cameron Kitchens, I've heard some good things about the safety out of Miami, but I don't think we're taking a safety. There's Jeremiah Trotter Jr., linebacker from Clemson. Yeah. Um, he's a little smallish for me as a linebacker, but I yeah. mean, we do need linebacker. I think we can still get something of value later in the draft. Okay. Yeah, I agree with you on that one. So we can go ahead and pass Jeremiah Trotter Jr. I mean, what, do, okay, just say this is the situation. Browns are sitting there. Third round, Trey Benson's on the board. you think they go ahead and swing for it? Um, he's bigger than Bucky Irving. Irving's got the crazy speed, and uh, I think we kind of already have that. I like the fact that he's 223 pounds. Yeah, 6'1". He's 20, almost 22 years right? He's six Young. one. He's a big guy. The explosiveness is what I like. And that's ultimately what you want for a zone read. That's a one cut go guy. So I'm sold. Okay. Well, I think we'll make a lot of Browns fans happy who are on to Trey Benson and who feel like we do need to get some more help in the running back situation. And we'll just go ahead and take Trey Benson here and we'll see how the yeah, rest of this he, draft shakes out. He's a guy that can outrun everybody on the field. So might as well take him and hopefully we can develop him. Yep. So now here we are. We're sitting here at pick 156 and a guy that I believe you said you like, right? Theo Johnson, tight end from Penn State is on the board. If we scroll down a little bit now, I do like J.D. Bertrand, this linebacker from Notre Dame. Barry Shuck sold me on him, said that this is a dude that can step in and play middle linebacker from day one in the NFL. No qualms, no worries about him whatsoever. So I do like him. There's Joe Milton, who we talked about. And that's probably about it. At this pick, so we'll scroll back up here. But what do you what are you feeling here? Um, I would either go Johnson, I would go Barrett, or I would go Bertrand. Um, I like the range that uh, Bertrand has. He is everything that we thought that uh, Phillips would be, and wasn't just mm. because of injuries. I'm hoping that we can get a sideline to sideline thumper, and that's ultimately what I'm understanding that this guy is. Um, you can see here, smart in coverage, fundamentally sound uh, against the run. You are going to have to be fundamentally sound if you're going to play the Baltimore Ravens and the Steelers twice a year. Let's fire this dude up. Yeah, I mean, the the one thing here, PFF says, most glaring, he did not record an interception or a forced fumble in college. Not the biggest deal for me when you're talking about this middle linebacker spot because the dude is a, is a tackler, a sure-handed tackler, and I just, I don't think that that's really what you're wanting that position to necessarily be all about is forcing these fumbles. You want him to make tackles. I want you to plug yeah. the gaps. I want you to stop when players get through the line, let the, let the force fumbles interceptions go to J O K and the safeties and that kind of stuff. I'm not worried 100%. so much about that. So you want to go ahead and do uh, JD Bertrand here? Yeah. I, I mean, I don't even think with Jim Schwartz defense, like I, I did a deep dive last year in Jim Schwartz defense and his linebackers don't, don't do those kind of things. They sit your ass down tackles. Yeah. That's what they do. Yep, so I know that now we're we're at pick 206. Steel Chambers, linebacker from Ohio State, is on the board, so we could have waited on linebacker and maybe potentially gotten him. 
But here we are. We got like Javian Cohen is still on the board. The guard from Miami who we took in the last draft, Frank Gore Jr. The, well, we've already taken a running back, so we need to worry about that. But I think we should probably start looking at offensive line. 100% man, put Cohen up there because you got me sold on that guy. Like I said, he, or like you said, uh, he can play multiple positions. Let's do it. Okay, so we took JV and Cohen. Now we are with our last pick, 243. And, you know, we could try to go tackle, we could try to go tight end, see if there's anybody here. So we, this is the only time that I might pick def, like inside defensive tackle. Okay. And I've been looking at this uh, Evan kid, Evan Anderson. Was it Evan Anderson? Yeah, from yeah. Florida Atlantic. From, he might be a developmental guy. I, I thought he took a like. He, he seems pretty consistent through his uh, school. I like the 356 pounds. Basically, try to move me. You got to cut me. I'm a seventh rounder. Who cares? Yeah, that's a good point. So we can go ahead and do that. So we'll take. Evan Anderson, the defensive interior from Florida Atlantic. And if you guys are out there mock drafting, by the time you get to the seventh round, the names you're familiar with and the names that you're excited to draft get pretty uh, pretty scarce. But here we go. Uh, now, the PFF grades, of course, they're based on what they project the needs to be. And we came at it from a much more, I feel, reasonable perspective based on the Browns roster and actual needs. And, you know, Keon Coleman, Trey Benson, that's fine. I didn't realize we took both the Florida State guys. J.D. Bertrand, Javian Cohen, and Evan Anderson. Actually, PFF didn't grade it too badly. You know what, dude? We must like Florida players because those are all Florida universities except for Notre Dame. You're right. Yep. <laughs> all right, everybody, get up here and play in that cold weather because we don't have our dome yet. <laughs> yeah. You wait a couple of years, we'll get that dome. That's right. Okay, well, that's pretty cool. I... I always like doing this too. Click over and see what the first round, how the first round went. So Williams, May, Marvin Harrison, Neighbors, Joe Alda, Dunzi. I mean, these are all kind of chalk picks that I see in most mock drafts. Um, I don't know if you see anything crazy in here. No, it's it's all like kind of where it's going to be. And there's I mean, going to the the, cr the craziest things that I have happen like when I do these simulations is either uh, Bo Nix. Um, uh, there's another quarterback too. Who's the other guy? Penix falls to the Browns, and I just trade that pick, and I try to reap all the benefits of that, <laughs> as many draft picks as I can get. Yeah, definitely. So, like I said earlier, I do think that there's a very high potential that the Browns, maybe not the second pick, maybe that third round pick, maybe they trade back a little bit to pick up an extra mm -hmm. pick later on. Because as you can see, if the Browns don't end up with a Trey Benson in the third round, which I don't think is likely, um, there are guys later in the draft that we were looking at thinking, well, hey, this guy wouldn't be a bad swing at that position. And there's some tight ends available. We took one at the in the second round in the, the first mock draft, but you can find yep. them later in the draft too. So that's kind of what's nice about the Browns this year is they've got positions that they've identified as their, their key focal points. And there's a yep. wide range of potential fillers for those spots. So, I mean, they do get to have the luxury of sitting there in the second round and say, well, let's see – the best player at the positions we need. Let's see who's available and, and kind of go from there. Yeah, absolutely. All right, man. Well, that was fun. I love doing mock drafts and we'll see if we can't get yeah. in here and maybe do one more mock draft episode as we get closer to the draft. Maybe we'll try to do one the, uh, the weekend right before the draft, since you're going to be here on Friday doing the actual coverage with us. We'll try to get yep. one more mock done as close to the draft as possible. So we're current and up to date. Yeah, we'll let the uh, the PFF and all these draft similarities. Uh, hopefully, they change their uh, perspective on things because I don't think we need D line and I don't think we need long linebacker that that high in the draft. But we'll see what happens. Absolutely. All right, man. Well, I appreciate you jumping on here, doing some mock drafting. I hope everybody enjoyed. Drop in the comments uh, picks that we botched, stuff that you think we we're like, guys, that was a stupid pick, or that you love the picks, or some players that you saw on the board that you're jonesing for that you think would have been better. So just let us know. We love talking prospects and the NFL draft for the Cleveland Browns. Again, if you're on YouTube, like the video, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of our, you know, we've got content coming out all the time, videos, episodes, we've got lives. We do a live episode every week. And, of course, Kenny will be in studio for the live NFL draft coverage of night two, April 26th at 7 o'clock on YouTube. So make sure you don't miss that one. That one's going to be a ton of fun. It's going to be a 
three plus hour grind, Kenny. I hope you're ready. Oh man, I'm ready. I can't wait. <laughs> It'll be a good time, man. Like I said, we'll have six guys in studio. We'll have a couple guys in the production room running the video cameras and everything. So as long as the tech holds up, everything should be good. So you know how that stuff usually goes. But Sweet. <laughs> All right, everybody. We appreciate you tuning in and we'll catch you next time. Until we do, let's go Browns. Let's go Brownies. <laughs> Thanks for listening to another episode of The Dogs Podcast. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube and follow us on Twitter at The Dogs Podcast. Get your thoughts on the show at thedogspodcast.com. This episode is brought to you by Danger Coffee. Browns fans, we talk about how Danger Coffee is made free from mold toxins that are in 45% of the world's coffee, but that's not all that Danger Coffee has to offer. Mineral and nutrient deficiencies are a big deal. They make you feel sick, tired, stressed, and they can give you brain fog. These deficiencies negatively affect your immune system, your digestion, sleep, metabolism. Have you ever wondered why you get an initial burst from your coffee? But then you get that little crash not long after. Danger Coffee's patent pending process remineralizes your body with more than 50 trace minerals and electrolytes, leaving you more energized, engaged, powerful. These micronutrients enter the cells to boost performance. They bind to toxins to provide detoxification support. I know that sounds like a lot, but the bottom line, guys, is minerals matter. And most of us really don't get enough of them on a daily basis. Danger Coffee delivers micronutrients, plus it gives you access to the minerals you already have. Head to DangerCoffee.com, use our code DOGS, D-A-W-G-S, for 10% off your order. And that code can be used over and over, so you get 10% off every order you make using code DOGS. It's time to start every day off with a cup of coffee that gets you going and actually keeps you going. DangerCoffee.com. Code dogs.